at that time because he had thought, what am I supposed to do? This ark is at this man's house and he's getting blessed, but when I try to move it, this guy died. And so God had to, he had to check himself before he wrecked himself, just like we have to do a lot of times. And so David went back home and just thought, Lord, what did I do wrong? And of course, when we ask God, he will always tell us and he will always help us check ourselves because we don't even know what we're doing wrong half the time. And so David had placed his most prized possession, the very presence of God, on a new cart. That's where he went wrong. He wanted God to be with him, but when things got shaky, everything fell apart. And we do the same thing with God so often. I, as I was praying for us this week, I felt so strongly in my heart that the Lord wants this new information that we're learning about him as our groom, this new information to not be placed on a new cart in your life. Or don't dump it on your old cart. That cart that you know that you pull, that's got, this is what I do every day, this is, this is my burden, this is my time. And then we, we sometimes with God, we throw him on that cart, and he becomes another thing that we do, another burden that we have. It actually makes us weightier instead of lifting the weight from us. And he was like, tell him not to do that. He said, I'm calling you to a new place of trusting me. I'm calling you up. I don't want to be new information that you throw on your cart that makes you feel even more guilty now because you're not spending more time with me now because now you've got a husband on top of all your other obligations because I came to carry all that for you, not add to the burden. This road leads to death. When we put him on a cart and he becomes another thing that we do, another obligation, that leads to death. Him holding us leads to life. And we've got to put all of our life, everything, every burden on him. Easier said than done. Because we don't even know how much of our burdens we're holding. He, it takes him even showing us. We, we're so much like sheep. We just are after that nut munch of grass. And, and God's saying, I want all of you. I came for all of my bread. And it takes even knowing him in order to even know what that means and what that is. So if sometimes if your cart doesn't seem to be moving, if it seems stuck in that place, could it be that it's still waiting for you to rest, for you not to try to pull it out of the mud, but to get in, which is called faith. When you actually get in and you're like, I can't do this anymore. I'm like, you carry me, God. It that's called faith. That's what moves the cart. That's what gets things moving. It's, what, it's called rest. And that's what God came to give us. So that the two of you, Jesus and you, you and your husband can finally get somewhere in this world. Get somewhere in this life. Why did he choose a cart? It's easier. We're in a hurry. We just want to throw God onto our pile, do our little 15-minute quiet time, and get on with the way we've been doing things. But he didn't come to, to enter your life so you could have the same life. He came to make all things new, a brand new creation in Christ Jesus. And we do not know how to make ourselves new. So we have to get in and put our rest fully in him. God, what do you want me to do? God, I don't even know where to start. Help. He can take that. He doesn't, he doesn't, he's not going to join you when you throw him in the cart. He wants to pull you, not you pulling him. So we get in a hurry, and then we think, well, it's a new cart. Isn't that good enough? But it's never good enough if it's not the, in the right way that he told us. You know, he told us he came to give us rest. He came to give us a light burden, not a heavy one. So if your lives are feeling really heavy, you need to go ask him, Lord, what am I carrying? Lord, how did, how, I don't even know how to get up in that car right now, but I want to. And I promise you that is enough for him to have something to work with. And he will get you. He will come pick you up and carry you on. <laughs> like, whoo! What was I thinking trying to carry all that by myself? A cart was used to transport common idols. All the idolaters would pull their idols in a cart. So if you're carrying God around in a cart, and along with all of your other junk, that the same way that the person, the, the, all the other people in your office next to you carry around their lives, what is setting you apart from them? What is, how is God being set apart in your life? They're seeing you weighed down just like they are. 
I'm fully convinced that that's a big, huge problem in the church. We're not set, we don't look like we're set apart, so the world doesn't see that Jesus is set apart, and they think, what's the big deal? They're just like us. And there's nothing that separates us from them. Because we're treating him like a common idol and not like Lord of our lives and the master of who we are. The cart is our idea. It's not God's idea. He already came up with a solution. And we are, we, if he is Lord of our lives, we are to submit to his solution for our lives, not our, what we think <coughs> is our, not our perception of what is his solution is. And we get our perceptions of who God is mixed up with who God really is all the time. And even if you just are willing to come to him and just say, God, I don't even know who you are. It takes humility to do that. Lord, I don't know who I am in you. I don't know who you are. And that's where I want to start, God. Can you come and show me the reality of who you are? Because I really want to be held by you. I really want to be carried by you. I really do want to be your bride in truth, not just say I am. I really want to do the thing. He will. There's no doubt in my mind that he will honor that prayer, and he will manifest himself to you, and he will come pick you up if he has to and carry you until you learn to let him carry you. In the NIV, 1 Chronicles 15, 11 through 13, it says, It was because of you. This is when David finally got it. Like I said, God will always show you where you left off. It says, It was because of you, the Levites, did not bring up the first time that the Lord God broke out in anger against us. We did not inquire of him about how to do it in the prescribed way. We just did it. We didn't ask you how you wanted it done, God. And that is where we miss it. So many times we just don't ask him. If we start asking him, even silly things. Where did I leave my keys, God? Believe me, he will show you. we got to learn. It's a habit. we got to start, oh, yeah, God knows. Oh, yeah, God knows what I'm supposed to do. Oh, yeah, God knows how I'm supposed to do this. And start asking. Start talking to him. Some of you haven't never heard him because you've never bothered to ask. You think he only cares about the big stuff. But if it's your life, he cares about it because you're his. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for wholeness and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. There is a way, but there is a way, but it is the way to be truth and the life. It is Jesus Christ. And my son and I were talking about this this week because he's always like, I just don't know what to do. And I'm like, I know, it's so frustrating. But you know what? If God told us what to do, we would totally leave him out because we so much want to know what to do that we would miss the relationship to take the do. We want a to-do list. We don't want a God. Let's just be honest. Because a to-do list is clear. Here, do this, do this, do this, do this. And we would miss the relationship. So every time you think you know your way, you're, you're probably in the wrong way. Because Jesus doesn't give us a prescribed. He gives us a prescribed way, but it's not out of relationship with him. And so you can be like, okay, I know what I'm doing now. I've got this thing down, and he'll, be, he'll change it all up on you because he's like, you know what, I'm going to keep switching it up because I'm going to show you something new about who I am now. And so you can never say, okay, I got it down, let's walk with Jesus. Because just when you think you're walking, he's going to teach you to skip. And when you think you're skipping, he's going to teach you to run. And when you're running, he's going to teach you to run backwards. And then he's going to teach you to leap, and he's going to teach you all this crazy stuff. And you're like, God, he's always changing up on me. It's because he wants you to know him, and he's never... His, his mercies are new every morning. He reveals himself in new ways every day. And there's a prescribed way for you to go. And he knows the plans he has for you. If he told you the plans he had for you, guess what you would do? You would jump into the plan and you would miss the, the whole reason is walking with him. He is the plan for you. Knowing him is the plan for you. It's not about what you're doing in this world. It's about knowing the one who is doing it with you. So there is a prescribed way for us, but you will not know it apart from Christ. You will not know it apart from knowing him. Just like we are given medication, we're given prescription medication, right? Because we've got a problem that needs to be healing. And we take it every day, and, and we know we need to take it to live. So Jesus is our prescription every day. A real, genuine meeting with Jesus 
not on your terms, but on his terms, is your prescription that you need every day. And it's not about, it's not even about what you're due. But when you are willing to get out your Bible and to say, I need